The Snapdragon 845 was a great SoC for the flagship smartphones of 2018, but the Snapdragon 855 it will be even better with improved performance, improved battery life, and added features. If you want to know how, let's get further into this discussion with several confirmed specifications and more. Hey guys, Ron here and in this video we are talking about the top 5 expectations from the Snapdragon 855 which are based on actual information. So let's get into it. The first one will be the process technology or the fabrication process if you want to call it that. So the Snapdragon 855 will be built on the 7 nanometer process technology which means 3 things. First, the performance will be a lot better compared to the Snapdragon 845. Second, the battery life will be improved. And third, the physical size of the SoC will be smaller. So, compared to the second gen 10 nanometer process technology on the Snapdragon 845, the 7 nanometer Snapdragon 855 should be a lot more capable in general. The second one will be the 5G capabilities. So, Qualcomm announced that they will bring 5G networks as soon as in 2019. And the Snapdragon 855 should spot the X50 LTE modem from Qualcomm, which is basically their first 5G capable LTE modem. This modem is also available on the 7 nanometer process technology, and this 5G modem should deliver gigabit Ethernet like internet speeds with low latency. And also, 5G networks in general, they should consume a little bit less battery compared to 4G LTE networks. So, again, 5G should also improve the battery life a bit in the Snapdragon 855. Now one question here, what about the X24 LT modem that Qualcomm announced recently? That modem is also built on the 7 nanometer process technology and that modem supports up to 2 gigabits per second download speeds. But that's not a 5G modem, that's a 4G LT modem instead. We can think of it as a bridge between the 4G and the 5G networks. So it's basically a 4G modem. And my question is, is Qualcomm planning somehow to bring that modem into the 855? Well, the chances are very low, but the chances are not at zero. So maybe they can implement the X24, but that means they have to come up with a new SoC, something better than Snapdragon 855 within just a couple of months so they can enable the 5G connectivity with their X50 and that will be disappointing for people who are buying the 855 at the first time. So I really hope that they don't bring the X24 modem in the 855. Maybe they can bring that into a mid-range chipset, a higher mid-range chipset. Uh, maybe something from the 700 series, that would be pretty good. But I hope that Qualcomm is not planning to bring the X24 LT modem into the 855 because that means that the Snapdragon 855 will not have 5G connectivity and that will be really disappointing but hopefully it will be the X50, the rumors are suggesting that and let's see what they do on this. The third one is faster base and boost clock speeds. So the Snapdragon 855 has a base clock speed of 1900 MHz. Now how do I know that? Well basically we recently got an unknown Xiaomi device running the Snapdragon 855 on Geekbench. So there the base clock was showing about 1900 MHz. And I don't know what device it was, maybe the Mi Mix 3. But the main thing is that the 1900 MHz base clock is about something more than 100 MHz faster compared to the base clocks of the Snapdragon 845. And I don't know about the boost clocks, but I'm expecting about somewhere near that 3 GHz mark and if that's true then fine, it will be faster but Qualcomm has to come with some kind of standard cooling solution for this one because higher clock speeds means more heat and if they are not cooled properly then they will probably thermal throttle when they are into their most performance levels. So yes, there need to be a cooling solution if that is true. but. Right now what I can see is that the base clocks and the boost clocks both will be faster compared to the Snapdragon 845. This will translate to faster day-to-day -day performance, multitasking and even heavy intensive tasks like video editing. Do you even do video editing on your smartphone? Let me know in the comment section. Anyway, let's move to the next point. The fourth one will be the AI capabilities. So 
we already know that the Snapdragon 855 will be a lot more superior in terms of AI compared to its predecessor. And as the smartphone industry has literally turned into this AI thing right now, every single SOC manufacturer is focusing on AI. And we have Apple and Huawei who have their own neural engines or neural processing units dedicatedly built into their SOCs. And how Qualcomm is doing it right now is by combining the CPU, GPU and DSP. So they don't have a dedicated unit. But the rumors suggest that the Snapdragon 855 will have a dedicated neural processing unit inside it. Now this is not a confirmed news. So it might be possible that they still use that CPU, GPU and DSP combination. But in that case they have to make the CPU, GPU and DSP a lot more capable because Apple's A12 and Huawei's Kirin 980 is coming out with better AI capabilities basically the second generation of their neural engines and neural processing units. So Qualcomm has to do very good to stay in this competitive market. If you want to learn more about how this whole smartphone AI thing is working then I have a complete separate video for that. So I will be leaving a card over here and you can check that video out to learn more about smartphone AI. But basically the Snapdragon 855 should be a lot more capable in terms of AI and it should embrace the features that we already have in our smartphones and at the same time add some new AI features that maybe some of us are awaiting very deeply but let's see how it goes. Anyway, last but not the least are the improved camera capabilities in the Snapdragon 855. So the 855 is expected to ship with better support for multi-cam systems. So we'll probably end up seeing more of those triple rear camera setups in flagship smartphones of 2019. Also the upcoming Spectra 380 in the 855 should be a lot better compared to the Spectra 280 that we saw in the 845. And that was already a very capable ISP but they should be even better. Especially if used with that AI, the Snapdragon 855 should evolve the smartphone photography a lot more and we have to see the practical results but these things are coming. Also in video segment we will be seeing things like better stabilization, better low light video and maybe some AI stuff in video as well but we have to see what happens. Anyway, the Snapdragon 855 is expected to be introduced sometime later this year, maybe around November or December and the Snapdragon 855 Power Smartphones will be showing up sometime in early 2019. So are you guys excited about this Snapdragon 855? I'm leaving a poll here, let me know in that and also comment your views and thoughts on the Snapdragon 855 and guys this is a new channel and this is basically the fourth mainstream video I'm making on this channel. So definitely subscribe and like this video, share this video with anyone you think who will be interested in this one and definitely subscribe to this channel. Also ring that bell icon so you don't miss any of our future content and keep coming back because this is Ron Infinitech and technology has no limits here.